what is going on everybody and welcome to the first video of 2020 guys if you're new to the channel and you don't know who i am my name is jeremy and welcome to jeremy's wild world so guys happy 2020 happy new years so i know i'm a bit late to the party but i've been a bit busy recently and only had the time right now to pick up the camera and record a video for you guys but anyways apart from that i hope you guys have been having a good new year so far i certainly have been and yeah let's get right into the video so if you saw from the title today's video is going to be an update from the inverts i picked up from the sub invert show as well as um, how I'm going to be breeding some isopods, showing you guys what you need to set up an enclosure to breed isopods successfully. So I'm going to be starting off with setting up the isopods and yeah, let's get right into the video. So guys, before I continue on with the video, I just wanted to quickly show you guys what my friend got me for a secret Santa gift. So as you can see here, it's a sign saying beware of the praying mantis, which I really, really like. I'm going to be keeping in the majority of the videos I make now when I record at my desk. But yeah, I got it as a secret Santa gift for my friend. Um, shout out to you if you're watching the video. You know who you are. I'm not going to mention your name in the video just in case um, you don't want me mentioning your name at all. So yeah. Uh, anyways, continuing on with the video, guys. Um, of course, when you're breeding ice pods, you're going to want to start off with a decent colony. Um, this is the colony that I'm starting off with, orange isopods, uh, scientific name Porcelio Lavis. I'm going to be putting the scientific name in the corner here. And yeah. So I'm starting off with 50. Um, I kept these guys in here for about a couple weeks since I got them off eBay. I got 40 and I mixed them with the orange isopods I got at the Southern Invert Show. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend checking it out. And yeah, so I have a total of 50, uh, 10 from the Southern Invert Show and 40 from eBay. And I've been keeping them in here. Yes, I know it's very, very small, but it was only until I found the time to record a video. I've kept them in here. And yeah, so um, of course you're gonna need well, of course, a group of isopods. Uh, depending on how quickly you want the colony to grow, I recommend if you want it quickly, 50 to 100. Um, but if you don't mind, like me, uh, I started off another colony of isopods with about 25 to 30, and now there's loads of babies. Uh, I'm gonna be showing you guys that later when I give you the update from the Sudden Invert Show. But yeah, so um, I recommend 50 to 100 isopods to start off your colony. And of course, you're going to need a container. So I'm going to be using this old sweet tub that I pre-drilled holes into it. I used a compass to stab holes on the top and a couple on the side. Um, the holes are for ventilation. Um, it's very important for uh, isopods to have v ventilation, depending on the species. Um, I found out that uh, Porcelia lavis don't necessarily need a lot of ventilation just enough to keep uh, stagnant air out of the container. So I have drilled some holes on top and a couple on the sides just to see if it affects um, the rate of breeding inside uh, the colonies. And yeah, so you're gonna want the holes um, where the babies can't crawl out of. Um, I'll show you an example in the other container later on. But yeah, so I'm going to be filling this up with substrate. And yeah, so let's do that right now. Right, so now that I have um, substrate in the tub, um, this substrate is purely cocoa fiber. Um, people usually mix cocoa fiber with soil or potting mix, um, but I don't have access to potting mix, so I'm just using cocoa fiber. Um, not too wet, but not too dry. I keep my damp, but when I squeeze it, um, no water drips out. And yeah, so um, people also include um, dried leaf litter and uh, rotting wood and mix it within the substrate so the isopods have a constant food source. Um, for me personally, I don't have access to any of those two right now. So instead I put in some wood chips, uh, small wood chips I picked up at the Southern Invert Show. Um, these wood chips will break down within the substrate over time and isopods can eat that. Um, I'm going to also be putting uh, dry leaf litter in there too. So don't worry, the isopods will have food and stuff like that. Okay, so now that you have your substrate, um, you're going to want to start including some other things. So I'm going to be putting in, of course, as I previously said, some dry leaf litter and I'm going to put it in some sphagnum moss. The reason why I'm putting in sphagnum moss is to control humidity. Um, isopod should have a choice on whether or not to go a more dry area or a more humid area. Um, the reason being is because isopods are not an insect. They are in fact a crustacean and they have gills and they still do need to be kept moist all the time so they should have a moist area within the enclosure um, to be able to uh, moisten up their gills and so they're able to breathe they are able to breathe oxygen but they do need to keep their gills moist so i'm going to be putting the sphagnum moss just a little bit on one corner like so so i'm just going to be keeping maybe just this just this much so as you can see 
just a little bit in the corner so they have um, a choice of a damp area. I'm going to be mostly spraying this area down and a little bit around the enclosure just so this side they have the dry side, this side they have the moist side. And yes, yeah, so I'm going to be adding some dried leaf litter as well. Uh, dried leaf litter is important to keep them fed. Uh, the babies will eat it, uh, the adults will also eat it. And yeah, so you just want to keep a little bit of dried leaf litter. As you can see, this is what my enclosure looks like. So usually I would include a hide, uh, such as cork bark or um, maybe like a, a rock, uh, but I don't have any of those at the moment. So I'm going to be leaving it out. I'm going to be getting some more cork bark, hopefully soon. I'm going to be attending um, C's, uh, the Southern so Southeastern Arachnid Show. So hopefully I'll be attending that and picking up some more cork bark from there. But for now, they'll be using the leaf litter to hide under and they can also hide under these sphagnums. So now that the enclosure is set up, let's get the isopods into the enclosure. Just quickly before I add the isopods into the enclosure, I just wanted to quickly mention one thing that I did and that was add a cuttlefish bone and sprinkled a little bit of cuttlefish throughout the enclosure. The reason why I added in cuttlefish bone is because isopods should have an access to calcium at all times. This is because they require calcium in order to grow. Um, they molt just like any other insect out of their exoskeleton and that requires quite a lot of calcium in order to grow a new exoskeleton. So um, they need the calcium to, uh, yeah, to so pretty much get bigger. They need the calcium to get bigger. So give them an access to calcium source. Uh, you could give them calcium powder, uh, put that on their food. You can give them cuttlefish bone. You can give them crushed eggshells. There's a lot of things that you can give calcium in. You can also give calcium rich foods. Um, I've seen some people give them old uh, prawn shells, shrimp shells after they boiled them. Uh, and yeah, so let's add in the ice pods. Now I'm going to be adding them around here. Just going to be dumping in the entire old substrates just because there could be quite a few babies in here. And yeah, so that's pretty much all of them. Just you can watch them run around and stuff now. Kind of buried the cuttlefish bone, which cuts the hole, shake it around a little bit, pull up the old leaves, and yeah, so. Those are the isopods now in their new enclosure. And one more thing, I'm going to be doing a little experiment. In here, I have fruit beetle larvae, and I've never seen this done on YouTube before, and I have not found anything on Google that says that sun beetle grubs can't go with isopods. So I'm going to be trying it out, adding these guys as well, just to see if they do okay in here. They do need quite a bit of a deep substrate, and I have quite a few in here. I have one massive one and maybe 12 little babies that have been um found within my communal enclosure i'll be showing that later on in the video and yeah so i'm going to be adding these guys in too just to see if they'll be doing okay in here too i'm just gonna move the moss really quickly i'm just gonna move the moss just so i can just so the uh, enclosure doesn't overfill on one side i'm just gonna dump the fruit beetle grubs in here as well and yes yeah, so now there are fruit beetle grubs and they're our isopods in this enclosure all going to be living hopefully together quite well and yeah so i'm just gonna chuck the moss back inside just like this uh, i'll probably end up adding in some more leaf litter later on and yeah so that guys is pretty much how i'm going to be taking care of these isopods yes it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing and yes it's not perfect it can be approved upon but this will work, I can guarantee it, because I do the exact same method with my dairy cow isopods, which I will be showing you just after this. So guys, if you um, follow all these steps, I can guarantee you Porcero laver specifically, I'm not too sure if this will work for other species, um, this will work for them to be breeding quite rapidly. And I have seen babies in here in the small tub already, so hopefully I get a booming population soon, soon, soon. And yeah, so let's get into the updates on the Southern Invert Show inverts I picked up. So guys, if you've made it this far into the video and you still want to keep on watching, this is basically just going to be an update on all the inverts from the Southern Invert Show that I picked up back in November. So starting off with the Dairy Cow Isopod, seeing how it's fitting since this video is supposed to mainly be a breeding isopods video, I'm going to be showing you guys how my method for breeding isopods has been very very successful for me so far so i'm just going to quickly open the lid and as you can see 
my Dairy Cow Isopod enclosure pretty much looks like the same as the orange isopod enclosure. So as you can see, I have Sphagnomos on one side, this is a humid side, and this is the drier side, which has mainly the cork bark and the leaf litter. And I just added in a fresh cuttle bone for them. And yeah, so if I lift up the cork bark, as you can see, my adults are doing just great. Uh, there are quite a few small ones. And as you can see, guys, look at all the babies. I've just had a boom in the population of all the babies that are in here. And I'm just really, really happy that my colony has just absolutely boomed. Like there are hundreds of babies in here, hundreds. And these are just the ones on the surface, let alone the ones that are hiding underneath the substrate, hiding underneath the leaf litter. And yeah, so if you follow the methods of breeding isopods that I showed you for Porcelio lavis, which these guys are actually Porcelio lavis too, just a different morph. If you follow that steps, uh, those steps, sorry, um, your colony will hopefully be successful just like mine. And I do not have holes on the top. I have holes on the sides of the enclosure. Um, and yeah, so I will probably end up putting the orange isopods in a tub like this. I got this food container tub from Poundland. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much an update on the dairy cow isopods. Loads and loads of babies. Again, Sam from Bug Rounds, if you're watching this, thank you for these isopods. I now have a large colony just like you. Well, not as many adults yet, but in the next couple of months, hopefully I'll have loads and loads of adults. And yeah, so let's move on to the communal enclosure. Moving on to the communal enclosure. As you can see guys, um, from the Southern Invert Show video, I mentioned that I was gonna be keeping a few inverts communally. And that was the orange banded millipedes, the domino cockroaches, the sun beetles, as well as um, dairy cow isopods. Although I did take out the dairy cow isopods just because I wanted to grow the population that I have in my colony um, a bit more until I put them inside of here. I did keep everything else in here. So as you can see guys, um, I have a humid side, the dry side, and a big piece of cork bark in the middle. Um, I may or may not split this cork bark in half just because I want to put some cork bark inside the orange isopod um, breeding enclosure just to give them a place to hide under because the domino cockroaches mainly bury themselves instead of um, hiding under the drift, uh, the cork bark. Um, so yeah, um, guys, let me know if I should do that or should I just leave this nice big piece of cork bark just like this, uh, leave it down in the comments below. So guys, um, I have a couple questions for you guys. If you could leave it down in the comments below, I'd really appreciate it. Um, the orange banded millipedes, um, I haven't seen them at all, um, above ground at all. Uh, since putting them in here. Uh, I've read online that they can take a few months to um, molt and breed and stuff like that. I did get a male and a female pair, so they may be breeding, um, but I'm not too sure. I'm a bit worried. So should I dig them up or should I just leave them alone for maybe another month or so? Uh, let me know what I should do down in the comments below. But yeah, so uh, with the sun beetles, unfortunately three of them did pass away, but I'm assuming they're males because as you can see, Oh, perfect timing. The little female is just popping up right now and she has actually given birth inside this enclosure because I did have a piece of cucumber and I take out um, the veg uh, a day or two after putting it in there and when I lift it up there was a few um, grubs that were underneath and I was just assuming that they were from her and she is just doing just fine. Um, I'm assuming that females live longer than male beetles. I'm not too sure. Let me know if I'm right or not. And yeah, so I have one sun beetle left in here, but as you saw just earlier on in the video, I did add in some more uh, grubs into here. So hopefully they'll do fine in the, uh, the orange isopod enclosure, and then I can put them back into here. And the domino cockroaches, all four of them are still alive. They're still um, running around. Uh, they are doing okay-ish. I haven't seen any babies. I'm not too sure how to distinguish male and female. Maybe they're all females, maybe they're all males. Um, who knows? Uh, but yeah. So the communal enclosure is doing absolutely fine. Um, guys, as well, leave me a comment down below just to let me know if I should dig up the millipedes or not. I'm pretty sure they're fine. But yeah, so let's move on to Itzy the Jumping Spider and Dice the Praying Mantis. So for the last update, guys, I'm gonna update you guys on Dice the Praying Mantis as well as Itzy the Jumping Spider. Starting off with Dice, she's doing really, really well. She has molted quite a few times since being in my care, but unfortunately in her last molt, she did fall down. I'm assuming at nighttime because when I woke up, she was like this. She um, 
didn't molt out of her leg properly. I think it was because I forgot to spray her down the night before she molted and I did not know she was gonna molt that night. So it may be my fault that it was like this. And she also has um, a damaged eye. I'm not too sure how well I can, mm, you can't really see it from here, but one of her eyes has a bit of damage to it. I'm assuming that's when she fell. Um, but yeah, so I'm just hoping in her next molt, I've been fastening her up just so she molts quicker. I'm hoping that the leg and the eye fix itself in the next molt or two. But yeah, she's doing well, she's eating well. Um, I did take out the fake plants. Those were from a fish decoration and I included some old orchid, orchid flower, uh, like root vine kind of things. Uh, my mum trimmed them and I took them and put them in here just to make the tank look a little bit more realistic. And if you're wondering why I have fish flakes and a carrot inside the enclosure is because I have loads and loads of springtails in here and obviously springtails need to eat so uh, Dice's um, fecal matter won't be enough so I include supplementary food such as the fish flakes and carrot. And yeah, so that's all it for Dice. Uh, let's move on to Itsy. So Itsy is still in the container I bought her in. She has molted a couple times and as you can see right here. Here she is, if the camera will focus, I'll just zoom in right here. She's currently feeding on a fruit fly. And wow, just look at her. She's getting really, really plump. I'm assuming she's gonna molt again soon. And yeah, so she's doing great. Um, I'm not too sure whether or not to upgrade her enclosure yet. The only reason why I kept her inside her small enclosure since getting her is because just to monitor her and make sure that she's eating. I just don't want her to be in a too big enclosure. She isn't catching the fruit flies and she's not eating and she dies. So yeah, just keeping her in here for now. She's doing great. And yeah, hopefully she becomes a nice, big, beautiful female and or male, who knows? We won't be able to tell until she gets a bit bigger, but yeah, she's beautiful. And yeah, she's very, very curious. She can probably see the camera right now. She's like, hey, why are you interrupting my lunch? Wow, look at her fangs, guys. It's not really focusing too much, but her fangs are just a lovely blue. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for the updates from the Southern Invert Show. Let's get into the outro of the video. Now guys, before I quickly end the video, I forgot to mention in the previous clips that I am going to be feeding the isopods um, fruits, veggies, um, fish flakes. They like fish flakes. As you saw in the dairy cow isopods enclosure, um, I put a little dish that I made out of a plastic cup. I fill that up with fish flakes every so often and they do go crazy for that, especially the babies. And it's quite cool because the babies are kind of transparent so you can kind of see their guts and sometimes the guts are quite colourful. Um, I do feed cheap fish flakes fish flakes that I would never feed to my fish. Um, I do feed my fish a quality fish flake. Never feed to my fish, loads of cereal, loads of coloring, but I will feed it to dairy cow isopods because um, it does benefit them. It has the vitamins and minerals that they would need. And yeah, so that's pretty much the end of today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you click subscribe and the notification bell down below so you don't miss a video when I do decide to upload again. If you guys would also like to do so, I would really appreciate if you guys would follow me on Instagram, Jeremy's Wild World underscore, no capitals. I do post pictures and videos of all the inverts and um, animals that I do keep uh, that I don't post on YouTube. So, yeah, so that's pretty much the end of today's video, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. <laughs>